What's up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome back to the Movie Resurrection Review. I'm Tim. I'm Jay. And today we're going to be talking about... Kid Coulter. Kid Coulter is the story of Justin Coulter. He's from Boston, Massachusetts. He uh, goes out west, Pacific Northwest, to Washington to visit his father. And then in this process of this good old uh, wholesome family fun, he gets kidnapped by spies, taken to the woods to be left for dead, uh, and then gets his revenge. And he's a 12-year-old boy murdering people. Okay, so let's get into some factoids about this movie real quick. I kind of like, you know, letting people... Written and directed by David O'Malley. Um, it stars Jeremy Seamus, Jim Stafford, who is actually like a country singer. Mm -hmm. He had a show out in Branson, Missouri for a while. Um, I actually like the song that he sings in it. It's what kids do. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you didn't like it, did you? No. <laughs> Tim is none too happy about this movie, actually. No. Uh, starring Also starring Hal Terrence, Greg Ward, Tom Hammonds, and Thomas Peterson. That is your main cast right there. Um, I I don't... I guess this movie is way more obscure than I thought because we couldn't find anything. We couldn't find um, how much... Uh, how much it cost to make, how much it made in the box office. We couldn't find any of that stuff. Whether it went to box office, the box office? Yeah, this could have been like... A, a B, Straight a C. to DVD or so, VHS, VHS at the time, right? Straight to VHS movie. Uh, don't know. So, unfortunately, we don't got a whole lot to share on that front. Except. Except. You should not watch this movie. <laughs> You gotta give him more than you just should not watch this movie. So check it out. For the first 30 <laughs> minutes, uh, you're uh, hit with some of the most terrible acting that I've ever been, the, had the privilege to witness. And when I say privilege, if this movie did not have uh, commercial breaks in it, I feel about 45 minutes in, I would have shot myself in the head. Alright? So for the first 30 minutes, it's the terrible, most terrible acting. It feels like an hour. Hang on. So wait a minute. Right now you can actually stream this on Tubi. That's what we watched it on. There are commercial breaks, but Tubi is 100% free. Um, shit. You know what? Tubi plug. They got some great old school 80s cartoons on there. So, um, so hang on. I was going to say something else before you started going in on this movie. And we're going to try to maintain some, some sort of professionalism when talking about this movie. This movie is a movie that we actually watched a lot growing up. And I remember really enjoying this movie back in the day. Me too. You too. Um, not the case. Uh, but this was on our list of movies we wanted to do. I think it is a little more obscure. I don't think a lot of people have heard of this movie, actually. So I'm glad to let you guys know. It's not all bad. It's not all bad, but overall, it's just kind of bad. So, um, like Tim was saying, the first 30 minutes of the movie, he goes from Boston, Massachusetts, out to uh, Washington State, uh, to visit his dad, and I believe, how did they they put that one? The teachers were on strike. Yeah, the teachers were on that, strike. I mean, why didn't they just make it summer vacation or something? I, I don't, whatever. You right, know. right. Anyhow, uh, so the teachers are on strike. He goes out to Washington, and him and his dad are, um, you know, just hanging out. And he's teaching him some things in the woods, how to, you know, some basic survival skills, I guess, if you will. Just some good old, you know, father son time happening. Um, it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wholesome? Wholesome? Sure. <laughs> go ahead. Go, you know what, Tim? Go ahead. You got the comps. All right, so check it out, dude. <laughs> um, and like you said, it does get better, right? The first 30 minutes before the bite guys actually speak, it's terrible. Like, for real terrible. It's bad. So right before he gets kidnapped, because he gets kidnapped, and that's how well, all Hang this... on, we gotta go, we gotta go in, like, a chronological time timeline here. As far as like what's happening in the movie, because that's that's the point. It's like we did okay, all right, fine, high, right? Fine. We gotta we gotta go through the steps. So we'll say this, yes. Yeah, so the first thirty minutes of the movie, even like the commercial break came on, and I'm I looked at Tim and I'm like, dude, and he's like, I know this sucks, and and what what's the commercials every twenty minutes or so, something, something like, like that, that. Um, maybe thirty minutes on on a, a, a feature movie or whatever. Anyhow, the acting was just terrible. It was terrible, terrible, terrible acting. And in this first, the first act of the movie, the first 30 minutes of the movie, like you said, it seems, it seems like it's an hour long. Mm -hmm. It's bad. It's bad. And I think the dad was actually the best acting in there and he wasn't great. You know, he was just, just a country guy who, I don't know how he got this part or how he came across this part to even audition. I, I, I don't know. We're going to jump forward a little bit here. Right. Him and the dad, you know, spending time together. I don't want to say bonding cause they, they bond, they have a pretty strong bond, I think, um, 
but they're spending time together and he's teaching him woody stuff um, forest things anyhow um we're introduced to a couple things that are relevant later on in the movie like this old indian horseshoe thing with the ring on it mm-hmm. that it's a magic trick yeah it's a you can get the ring off it it's only for the what for the pure of heart and for the experienced in life pure of heart and experienced yeah. experienced in life yeah so now flash forward and yes, we're going to take out that 30 minutes and that's all we're talking about in the beginning because it's just that. It's that kind of stuff. I mean, we could talk about they get home, the raccoons are, are eating dinner and it's... Anyways, watch the movie. Don't watch the movie. <laughs> so flash forward, the strike ended and he's taking his son back to the train station. Um, and while he's there... This dude comes up to him, kind of frantic. He hands him a uh, film canister, um, and he says, "Hey, get this, get this to the, the the cops, get this to the authorities, basically." So this dude gets up and leaves, and these, I guess, spies. That's how the the movie describes these two guys that are, you know, they're spies, whatever. Um, they they go out after him, after the guy who gives Justin the film canister. So they grab him, they throw him in the back of a truck, well, car, and right. while they're doing this, the kid's staring out the window, not taking advice from what he, the, the guy who gave him the, the film said, get it to a cop, who there was one literally 10, 15 feet away in the same fucking room. In the chain, in the train station. In the train station. Yes, there was a cop there. So instead of being like, yo, uh, I don't know what's going on, but those two dudes are on some fuck shit here. In the movie. I guess there'd be no movie. <laughs> there'd be you know, no, movie there'd be no fucking movie. That. So, but, but Justin Coulter decided not to do, go that route. He decided not to go right to the authority. Because he was nosy, man. Because he was nosy. And they realize that the guy don't have the canister, the film canister. And they're like, he had to have given it to this kid. Because he sat right next to him and was talking to him for a second. So basically, they go back into the train station and they literally abduct him. They kidnap him, literally kidnap this guy. Um, from there, from there, they're like, "Oh, we got the film back. That's all good. Yay! Uh, what are we gonna do with the kid?" They're like, "Oh, well, we can't have no loose ends. Let's take him to Bob and Bill up in the mountains and have them get rid of him." You know, they I guess they're like they're dirty work guys. So they take him to Bob and Bill. They're, that's not their names. I just fucking named them that. <laughs> and. They're like, yo, take care of this kid. And they're like, yeah, okay, well, it's going to cost you. I think he gives them like 80, 100 bucks. I'm like, it's not much. <laughs> it look, it look it, like, it's not much. Like like a small stack of 20s folded <laughs> yeah. over. Like it could have been $200. I like this. Uh, yeah, that's going to buy him breakfast. <laughs> what, 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 we're doing, what we're doing here. But anywho, so so th- they end up leaving, but Bill ends up pocketing or, or, or thieving the microfilm from the guy. Yeah, the film. From canister. the spies. And I use this very loosely. Spies. I guess that's what that means, right? Anyways, whatever. <laughs> so from that point on, it's... Can't now, try... Go ahead. Now, at this point, this is... I, I know you're so put off by this movie. It and is, I know you, you even said, F this movie, I don't even want to do it. But but then you said, no, we, we need people to know not to watch this <laughs> film. So let's, let's try to be a little more enthusiastic okay. with what's going on. But from this point, the acting actually does get a whole lot better. It does. From this point on. Even even, even the, the kid. Even the kid who plays Justin Coulter, his acting, and they called him Kid Coulter. That's why the man in the movie is Kid Coulter. His acting got better too. I don't know why or how or... It, it was the strangest thing because the acting was just horrible, horrible acting. And then as soon as he starts interacting with the adults... Um, that are that are you kidnapped know, him, to, kidnapped him, and going to kill him. The acting just got just way better across the board. It was strange, but second half was definitely much more bearable than the first half. Much more bearable than the first half. So there's even some comedy in there because you know they leave they leave the kid with Bob and Bill, and they're like, all right, well, you know, uh, you're going to die just so you know. So he actually jumps into a truck. Uh, takes off, and it's funny because they're sitting here like this, and it's like, it's getting away. He's like, yep. You going to stop him? Yep. <laughs> that, 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 that kind of thing. It was funny. Now, I don't know, how does this kid know how to drive at 12 years old? 
a stick on the uh, on top of that. And he was driving well. Yeah. Like he he was driving well. Um, that was kind of weird. And there's then a it, lot of that. Those. The, the, yeah. And then he hijacks. So so he takes off in the truck, and one of the guys jumps on a motorcycle, takes off after him. He wrecks the truck. He gets out. He kind of pulled the uh, the the, the um, Kansas City shuffle, make make him look that way, and you go the other way, kind of thing. The guy comes up to the door. He's gone. He jumps on the kid. Jumps on the motorcycle. Takes off. Now, twelve years old again. He's riding motorcycles. He's driving <laughs> trucks. It's a different time, maybe. <laughs> different time in the eighties, right? Oh, that's what I was going to mention. The movie came out in nineteen eighty four. Sorry. Anyways, um, so they take this kid up to this. Uh, old abandoned mine, uh, a mine shaft. That's a hundred feet deep. Hundred feet deep. Hundred feet deep. And tells him, hey, the whole story behind it, you know, that there's some guy who died down there and no one ever got him out because it's so deep. It's a hundred feet deep. Picks a kid up, dangles him over the mine shaft. Butterfingers lets him go. <laughs> so the kid's falling for a hundred feet, right? And uh, most thing that happened to him, oh yeah, he uh, he didn't even skin his knee. <laughs> he uh, he landed on his feet and then fell to his buttocks. Yeah, and then he was chipper. He was good looking around the mine shaft. Yeah, no broken anything, no broken bone. Any, yeah, go on. So a skeleton falls on him, and that prompts him to climb out of the mine shaft. So not only did he survive a hundred foot straight down fall through a mine shaft, he climbs a hundred feet up out of that mine shaft. <laughs> He does. I think it could happen. I don't think it could happen. I don't think it could happen. So since after that, he starts trailing the guys because he don't know where he's at. So he starts trailing the Bob and Bill. So I guess he can like get back to some sort of familiar civilization. Place. Yeah. And ends up messing with them and um, scaring them and stealing their knives and for some for some reason, this is like break point for oh some reason. Uh, okay. He m- meets up with this um, the Dongo type character <laughs> of uh, Man in the Woods, Ben the Woods, senile. Um, and for like five ten minutes, just the whole scene didn't or scenes didn't need to happen. Yeah, just I guess so that he can get a rope and a uh, fur. Whatever you want to call it, for poncho. A poncho or something, yeah, yeah, equivalent of, right? Yeah. So I, mean, I feel that there should have been a better way it could have happened upon a cabin, like you said. Uh, just a lot of different ways you could have uh, shortened that. I guess they had to make it 110 minutes or something. I, it was too long. That that scene was unnecessary, and it was unnecessarily long as well. Yeah. Like the kid tells him. Hey, um, so yeah, these these spies kidnapped me. They took me up to Bill and Joe, and and they dropped me down a mine shaft. Oh, I was also I thought I was gonna get eaten by a bear and a puma at one point. Um, but you're an adult. Um, instead of taking me into town into civilization, you give me a rope and a <laughs> and a fur poncho, and you just kind of send me on my way. Like, yeah, that's a little weird. Yeah, so. He's still trailing the bad guys because, again, he don't know where he is. He doesn't know how to get back. It's very easy to get lost in a situation like this. And But here's the thing. He has to get his microfilm back because Bob and Bill have his microfilm. They have they have his film canister at this point. Yes. So then he starts pulling some of that. What's that What's that show with the dog and that, that bad guy? And they're in that race. <laughs> and then they, they have Rock, enough time to, to, to uh, burn everyone's ass in the race set up a trap, hide, wait for the trap not to go off, and then they get caught by it. He starts doing some of that stuff, yeah. except for his traps work. Yeah. So, and it's... He winds up he winds up being ahead of them at some point, setting traps for them, when it's like... You don't know where you're at. How you know they're going to walk that way? Yeah, and dude, if you're going to... Again, you're going to get that much ahead. Just go and go get the police, <laughs> which you should have done in the first place. Okay, Kid Coulter? You should have done that in the first place. Got the police. You know, everyone knows you're missing. They're looking for you at this point. Okay, so come on, dude. You know what? The, the best thing to do if you're ever in the wilderness and and you need to find your way home, find a river and and go in the direction of the flow. 
Follow the flow of the river. Really? Yes. You will eventually, eventually you will come across some kind of civilization. I would have yes. said start a forest fire. You could do that too. <laughs> you know, people are going to go check it out and they're going to want to put it out. So yeah, don't start yeah, forest fires. Don't start forest fires. Smoky, smoking the bear will be um, pretty, pretty mad at you yeah. about that one. Ooh, here's a theory. What if Smokey Bear is starting the forest fires uh, that way he keeps his job? I, it's job security. Job security. Yeah, his wife is like, you know, they're going to catch you one of these days. <laughs> and he, he's like this. He's like, yo, bitch, I'm smarter than the average bear. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, That's a working theory. We anyways, back to Kid Coulter. That's a Kid Coulter. Okay, so, so anyways... He gets the microfilm back, uh, ends up uh, getting attempted murder on one of the guys because he, he shimmies across a. Uh, this, oh, this was this was great too. He takes he takes his rope and he ties he ties a little little rock around the end, <laughs> throws it to the other end, and that thing just happened to catch it between two trees, perfect. And then he he gets the other side, you know, tight around a tree, and he just starts you know climbing climbing. To the other side of the uh, the river. Yeah, how many feet would you say that was? About seventy. Yeah, about. <laughs> and and they made they made it look like the river was seven feet <laughs> wide. Like he just threw the yeah, dude. Come on, sorry, yeah. you're not throwing a rock that far. You like, got no cannon. Nah, on, you dude. ain't Dan Marino. So anyhow, one yeah. of the guys is trying to get over there, and he cuts the rope on him, doesn't he? No, he he falls. He falls. He okay. falls. He just falls. He falls into this river. Um. And then the second guy, the I guess the smart one of the two, if yeah. you will, he gets across and he's hot on his trail. And they wind up, he winds up chasing him up this mountain, this mountainside. Uh, so now they're doing like, like free climbing, sports, free free climbing. Free climbing. Right. One of them has uh, <laughs> uh, burlap moccasins. That's Kid Coulter. The other one has rubber rain boots. And there's straight climbing this mother. Comes across a rattlesnake. Kid Coulter does. The rattlesnake don't bite him. He's like, okay, I'm going to give you a pass, dude. You're obviously in some some trouble. The other guy comes up on the same rattlesnake. Kid Coulter warns him, though. That's the mess up thing. Him. Don't, don't. There's a rattlesnake. Yeah. This guy is quick. A rattlesnake can strike at like 180 miles an hour. This guy grabs the rattlesnake by the head. Ah, I'm to eat you. And then throws him. <laughs> Anywho... Kid Coulter ends up getting to the top. This guy ends up freaking, oh, oh, I've lost my footing or whatever. Kid Coulter, being a Kid Coulter, <laughs> decides he's going to help him out with the horseshoe, the magic horseshoes. So he got the ring part. He hands the guys the, the horseshoe part. And I guess Kid Coulter's like, you know what? I ought to just let go. I just kill this guy. And this guy's like, oh, please don't do that. And because he's fixing to get killed he whips his knife out to try and to stab to, the kid who's trying to save his life yeah mind yeah you. yeah that's not how it goes but yeah he so he whips his knife out to try and kill the kid the magic trick happens he falls to his death the ring comes off the chain guy falls to his death um and you would think you know that's that's like oh, okay he's safe ju ju justin culture safe like yep. awesome <clears throat> the movie's over right no. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. No. You got about three to five minutes of some artsy filming type shit. I don't know who said, hey, know what would be a good idea? We got five dudes here. Let's try and get a, uh, who could get the best ending scene of this of this film. That's what it was like. It but was it's like different angles of just him staring off into space. Yes. One time a, a flame flickering in front of his face. Another time of him just silhouetted, which which was cool. That one the was night neat. And, and yeah. the, 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 the magic trick thing. Um, and just totally unnecessary. Uh, he gets found out by the helicopter. Which was looking for him. Which was looking for I him. I mean, to, to the kid's credit, he did, he built a fire. He built a fire. And he put some, like, like, leave, kind of big leaf branches over it. That way it would start smoking and mm -hmm. whatnot. So, you know, again, he learned some skills from his dad. So at least he was able to apply those skills and get out safely. Yeah. They did find him. But yeah, the, the artsy, um, the ending with with the it was it was strange it was just very strange it's like how many different angles and how many different things we can do okay look just stand right there by the sun now it's like oh don't move hey i'm gonna come over here and the flames are gonna be in front of you it's gonna look really rad watch yeah it was it was a weird 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 yep. way to end the movie yeah and th and that's how the movie ended right there you see the helicopter it's funny you see the helicopter and the helicopter was like oh we found him and flies off it's like wait can you, can you help the guy well no 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 there, there's more like, 
He gets back to he the, did that's he right land, but I think I cut it off after that. I was like, nope, I'm out. I'm, I'm fucking through. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm still here, dude. Fuck okay, me. so on Rotten Tomatoes, there was actually zero critic reviews, so it has no score. It's not a zero; it's no score. And audience score on this is sixty percent, and I think there was fifty or so. Um, votes on that uh, versus, you know, like three o'clock high. There was what thousands, like three thousand votes or something. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is probably a pretty obscure movie. Very. Um, Very. Now you guys know about it, and you know, watch it or don't. It's up to you. Um, if you watch it, we warned you. <laughs> we warned you. So you want to do a final thoughts and a score on this one? Yes. Um, kind of mad that I watched it now because that nostalgia factor for me. Um, was very disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, it happened. It happens. You know, it happens. It happens. Um, didn't think it happened to Kid Coulter, but it did. <laughs> um, I think that's what I'm really upset about. Not not so much the movie itself. No, the movie too. But uh, the fact that it wasn't, it's like, it wasn't that great. It wasn't. And I, I even afterwards, I was like, dang, we shouldn't have watched that, dude. We should have just, we should have just let those... The, the good memories of mm -hmm. this movie just just live, and I even made a tweet about it, a very vague tweet. I said, uh, "Ever watch something you watch as a kid and it sucks?" I didn't give the movie or anything because I knew we were going to do a review on mm -hmm. it. I didn't want to give it away, but um, no, I'm glad we we did this one though, and I'm glad we 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 rewatched it instead of trying to do this from memory because we'd have played the movie up like. It was great. Guys, you don't understand. You got to go watch this movie because it's basically like it's like it's like Home Alone, but in the forest, and it's before Home Alone. So you got to see this. Right. That's what it would have been had we not rewatched this movie. Anyways, I cut you off. Go. For no, that was it, dude. I'm good. So, what's your score on it? <laughs> for five. A five. Five. Four point five. Four and a half. Four and a half, five. Four and a half, five. Four and a half, five. Okay. Um, Man, that's even pushing. I'm giving him too much credit, dude. No, four and a half. I, four and I, a half. At five, I think you're giving him too much. Four and a half. Uh, at four and a half, I, I could see four and a half. What um, about you? I am also going to go with probably about a four and a half. Uh, the movie, the first half of the movie was so slow and, and just like the pacing was just wrong compared to the second half of the movie. Um, and some people might be like, well, I really like that contrast, but you know... It's not like you know, a color contrast where you got like a hot pink on on black, you know, like that. That's a that's a good color combo, a good contrasting color combo. You know what I mean? Um, this 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 didn't work. That contrast just didn't work for me. At least it didn't work for me. Um, I did like the song that uh, that Dad Culture sang. Uh, it's called "That's What Kids Do." But you don't need to watch the movie. You can actually just go uh, look it up. And uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy? Some Stanton. Uh, Jim Stafford. 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 Jim Stafford. Jim Stafford. That's what kids do. It's, you know, it's cute. It's catchy. Um, the acting was poor, especially in the beginning. And it wasn't just the kid. There was some supporting actors, too. Like, you know, the, 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 the mom. bully guy. The mom. The, the girl that he's crushing on, which never went anywhere. It's weird. Um, the later half of the acting did get better. The scene with the guy in the woods just, on, on, like, to me, I was just like, what the hell is going, like, it's, yeah. are we in some, like, weird alternate Alice in Wonderland universe? Like, what is going on with this right here? It was strange and so misplaced. Didn't need to be there. Could have been left on the cutting room floor. Um, yeah, four and a half. Four, four and a half. And and I, I think that's being a little generous, maybe yeah. a four. So, but we're going to call it a four and a half. Um... Do we recommend you watch this movie? No. But make your own decisions. Go watch the movie if you want to. And like Tim said, we warned you. So if you want to see, you know what? Go watch that. I challenge you to go watch the movie and then put your score down in the bottom. Yeah, don't take it from us. Yeah. Form your own opinion. Form your own opinion. And as always, if there's a movie you want us to review, the more obscure, the better. But again, we're not. We're trying not to get into like super c-list cheese sci-fi horror kind of, i mean and we will do that kind of stuff but yeah. you know don't don't put gremlins in the comments is is what i'm saying so um anything else well, that's i think we covered it all right thank you guys very much see you next time later